Well, I'm joined by best-selling author Alexandra Joel, whose latest book, The Royal Correspondent, has just been released. Alexandra, great to have you uh, here in the studio. Tell us about The Royal Correspondent. What is it about? The Royal Correspondent is about a feisty young Aussie girl born on the wrong side of the tracks with a burning desire to be a journalist. Somehow she makes it onto a city paper and then she is sent to London to cover the controversial marriage of Princess Margaret. Now, this is in 1960. So to tell you about the book in brief, she uncovers a royal scandal, which is real. She becomes involved in two very complicated romantic entanglements and high-level espionage. So you've got these parallel, complicated love lives of That's the royals right. and your That's protagonist right. uh, as well. And um, what was the inspiration for this? Because you say some of it is true. That's right. I always include real characters in my books. So this is the dawn of the swinging 60s and you'll see everybody from Mary Quant to Christine Keeler and John Profumo with the infamous Profumo affair. Why? Did I write it? Well, I had a growing up in a very poor, seedy place in Sydney, which was exactly the same house in exactly the same street my dad grew up in. And his father said to him, there are only four ways out of this dump, and it's the four Ps. Police, priest, professional boxer, or press. And at the age of 14, my dad joined the Daily Telegraph in Sydney. So he went on to have this illustrious career. He organised all sorts of official events, coronations, the opening of the Opera House, visits of the Pope and many royal visits. He was knighted twice. All sorts of honours were showered on him. And after he passed away, I began wondering... What if he'd been born a girl? And what challenges would that girl have faced? And who might she have become? So, so that was my starting point. So you're taking readers behind palace walls in the 60s amidst the scandals. Looking at today, um, we've got plenty of scandal and intrigue going on behind palace walls. There'd be plenty of material for a, a book set in the modern day or, or even a soap opera, really, wouldn't there? Yes, um, that is part of this enduring appeal of the royal family, of course, and why The Crown was such a success, because it is an unfolding drama that never ends. You know, it's our equivalent um, of a high, very high-class Coronation Street. But I think... These days, life is very different because there were certain rules that were never broken. So the royal secret, which is in my book, was kept a secret for 50 years. You can't keep a secret for five minutes Not now. in the days of, of social media now. No way. No way. Um, I feel it's very sad on many counts to see Prince Harry in a witness box. Um, it's very sad to see him grilled by KCs. Um, I do feel for him and Me Meghan, but I feel overwhelmingly for his father, the King, and of course, his elder brother, Prince William, because I think there is not a single soul on earth that could understand what it is to be Prince William and the responsibilities and burdens he bears other than his brother. And now he's been left without Harry. And what has emerged over the course of recent months through Netflix, through Harry's book, through the court case that, that you mentioned, is that actually that relationship between the brothers has been splintering for a very long time, far longer than anyone in the public was aware of. And that's 
very sad, isn't it, when you, you look back at those two brothers who lost their mother so young, and as you say, have that unique perspective. I think it's interesting to um, draw a parallel um, with King George because um, when his brother abdicated from the throne, I mean, poor George, he never expected to be king, he didn't want to be king, and yet he was thrust into that position and he lost that connection entirely. And again, like um, Harry, his brother went off to live in a foreign country. The difference is today that everything is out there. And unfortunately, one of the people, one of the individuals that is putting most out there is, of course, Harry himself with his wife, Meghan. How are they viewed and how are the royal family viewed, given what has gone on over the last few years in your home country of Australia? I think generally, Charles is seen as a good bloke. Um, I think it goes back to the time he spent in Australia when he went to school and he loved that. Um, and he in always, Geelong. Yes, that's right. And he went to Timbertops, which is their uh, country campus, and you go camping and bushwalking and all sorts of things. It was said that he arrived there a boy and, and left a man, didn't yeah. it? That that was a very formative experience for it, him. It was formative. And although it's a tough experience, it's not an unkind or harsh experience. And he always seems to be very relaxed when he's in Australia. Unfortunately, how I would say there was quite a lot of enthusiasm about Harry and Meghan. Everyone saw Meghan as, um, you know, a fresh new injection of spirit, an interesting woman, a very contemporary woman. Um, there is general dismay over the most recent developments. Um, I mean, I think there's significant dismay because although Harry has had burdens, he's also had great privileges. And he was very popular during his military years while he was doing the Invictus Games. Um, Australia felt very strongly about that. Um, I think it would have to be a long way for him to climb back to public opinion. As far as a republic's concerned, I believe most people, if they were asked, do you want an Australian head of state, would probably say yes. But nobody seems very anxious to unwind the current system. And as our Prime Minister Albanese says, it's not a priority. Alexandra Joel, fascinating talking to you. Thank you very much indeed. Safe travels uh, back to Sydney and the very best of luck with the book. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it.